Welcome back. Military vets like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, have been warning this war on Islamist territory could be a 30 to 40 year long slog. But maybe we can cut down ISIS far more quickly than that if we can get to their source. Jim Walsh is an international security expert with the MIT Security Studies Program, and he joins us now. Good to have you on the program, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. Can you characterize the president's strategy in battling ISIS? You know, I don't think it's, uh, it's exactly clear. What we have, though, is a collection of different instruments. Do they add up to a full strategy? Uh, that remains to be seen. But obviously it involves getting coalition partners. It involves airstrikes. It involves supporting the Kurds and the Iraqi uh, uh, army in Iraq. Uh, you know, does that equal a full strategy? I think that remains to be seen. What, what about the training of the locals, whether it's the Iraqi army or the Syrian army? Uh, are, they, are they up to the task? Well, uh, clearly the army was, uh, the Iraqi army was undercut by the Prime Minister Maliki in Iraq. You saw what happened when ISIS first attacked, they sort of uh, cut and run. That wasn't true for all the army. Some parts of the army had fought valiantly earlier in the spring and, and, and the year before that. Right now, over the last several weeks, you're seeing some progress. And, what, and Iraq is the best case here, where you have U.S. air power providing close air support to Kurdish forces and to Iraqi forces. Under those circumstances, we've made some progress. Uh, still a tough battle, but some progress. There's not an equivalent situation inside Syria. Well, what, what about intelligence? What, what are we learning? I mean, you know, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers has said the intelligence community had warned President Obama about the threat from the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria for over a year, and yet that's not what transpired, uh, according to the president, uh, on that 60 Minutes interview. Yeah, well, I think uh, we need to be careful about what we're saying here. Uh, I, I, certainly, I and the Intelligence Committee, everyone thought ISIS was a problem. There's no doubt that ISIS was a threat. In fact, that within Syria, this growing sectarian war with the uh, war criminal Assad on one side and uh, violent jihadi extremists on the other, everyone knew that was bad news. The surprise was that ISIS rolled into Iraq, rolled over the Iraqi army, and then when they took on the Kurds, I think most people, the intelligence community, everyone, thought the Kurds were pretty well trained, pretty well armed, and then they sort of beat up on the Kurds. So that was the nature of the Surprise. Not that they were dangerous or a threat, but rather that they were able to make advances as quickly as they did. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's interesting because now we're looking at a coalition and the president has stressed that he doesn't want boots on the ground, um, leaving it to the local armies. I mean, if, if the Iraqi army was rolled over back then, why would we have confidence that they can actually achieve this now? Well, Marie, I think it's a great question. I think we won't have the answer to that question for a while. It depends in part whether the new prime minister can form an inclusive government, can support the uh, army, not sort of put hand-picked people in there and oust others. Uh, some of the early results are good, but one area where I would disagree with a congressman who you just interviewed, this is not a military-only strategy. There ha if it's only military, we're going to lose and there are going to be a lot more terrorists. There has to be a good government in Iraq. We can't govern Iraq for the Iraqis and we can't fight all their wars for them. They, as an institution, have to be able to start governing and doing a better job, or, and, or, and it won't matter how many uh, Americans we pour in there or how many weapons we pour in there if the Iraqis themselves have a government that doesn't work. I'm glad you mentioned that. I want to know, really, from you, the impact or, or the extent of the cyber terrorism threat. Is this an area that the terrorists will try to infiltrate? You know, I think so, but I hope they put more time into that than they do some other things. I think we have to have sort of a hierarchy. We have a sense of what's really important that we have to deal with now versus the thing that's sort of down the road. ISIS is a non-state actor, right? And it's good at some things. It's good at beheading. It's good at uh, uh, getting recruits. Whether it can compete with a state, a government, at the level of cyber terrorism, I have some real doubts about that. You know, the U.S., Russia, North Korea, China, they're all cyber heavyweights. Can ISIS compete? I don't think so. Another way to put it is, I'm more worried, you know, which would you rather have or be more worried about? Someone pointing a gun at your head, which is the situation right now, or someone attacking your laptop? I think the, the first order of business is uh, getting that gun away from us, and that means defeating ISIS in Iraq. Well, I, I understand. It's a very good analysis. But, but let me ask you this. Last week we had a massive uh, hack attack on J.P. Morgan's uh, computers, and it, it apparently was uh, originating in Russia uh, with uh, individuals in Russia having ties to the Russian government. How concerned should we be about this. Well, I think that's the future that we're all on. It's not, the, as I just mentioned, the sort of leading uh, folks in this regard are the Russians, the North Koreans, and the Chinese. But the U.S. has very big cyber capabilities. And here we talk both about offense and defense. Most of the U.S. focus has been on defense. But we have some very, very good people working, and obviously in, uh, in NSA and in other uh, forms of intelligence who use uh, cyber as a way to collect intelligence. So 
It's gonna, we're going to continue to face these problems. Uh, it's going to get bigger, not smaller, but it's not sort of the immediate threat that we face in the Middle East right now where people are getting killed. Understood. Uh, Jim Walsh, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much.